This set of slides is going to review controlled gates and also the controlled CNOT or the Toffoli operation. Think about how the NOT gate becomes the CNOT gate. We first start with a one qubit operation and then we expand it into a two qubit form. When we look at the CNOT matrix, there's a couple of observations we can make. We can see that it contains an identity gate matrix as its upper left quadrant and a NOT gate in its lower right quadrant. We can take that and generalize it to form any arbitrary um, controlled operations. So let's say we have a, a one qubit operation U and we can make it a controlled gate if we add a second control qubit and allow it to act on uh, the target so that it applies that gate U if and only if we have a probability amplitude for uh, KET1. So remember, uh, qubits can be in a state of superposition, so that's why we don't say it has to have a value of one, it has to just have a probability amplitude for ket one, so it acts on um, the target qubit and allows that second qubit to transform. So here we have our gate U, and this will become a controlled version of the gate, so we'll call it controlled U. Uh, so here we can see once again we have an identity matrix appearing in the top left quadrant, and then the U matrix in the bottom right quadrant of the uh, controlled U gate uh, matrix. You can take any single qubit operation and turn it into a controlled operator that uses two qubits. Let's walk through an example. Let's take our superposition gate, our Hadamard gate, and create a controlled variation of that that acts on two qubits. So we have our H gate uh, as a single qubit operation and the corresponding matrix. And we're going to form the CH gate or the controlled Hadamard operation. So once again, we can note that we have the identity matrix on the top of the matrix on the left. And then bottom right, we have our matrix for our single qubit Hadamard operation. Now let's practice with a state calculation. Let's say we have the state ket one zero that we want to transform by our controlled H gate. So we will have a cat one on the top terminal uh, going through the control input, a cat zero going through the target terminal. The cat one will pass through the top and then our cat zero will be transformed into a state of superpositions. We have one over square root of two multiplied by cat zero plus cat one. Let's validate that with a matrix multiplication. So we have our matrix for our operation, then we're going to multiply that by our um, vector that represents ket10. And if we take our result that we predicted, so ket1 uh, tensor one square root of two times ket0 plus ket1, we can write that in our bra ket notation, um, write it in our vector notation, um, take the tensor of that, and we get our final result. Um, and that's what we anticipate uh, whenever we do our matrix multiplication. So what we predicted as our output matches the result of our uh, matrix vector multiplication for our final state. What happens if we add additional controls to CNOT? So that would be the controlled CNOT or the CC CNOT operation, uh, which is also called the Toffoli gate. So the Toffoli gate acts on three qubits, two controls and one target. The NOT gate operates on the target if and only if both controls have a probability amplitude for one. Because remember, once again, our controls can be in a state of superposition. So they may not 100% be in the state of ket1. So here we have our CC NOT gate or our Toffoli gate. Uh, this is the symbol that you'll often see in uh, schematics or circuit diagrams for quantum circuits. We have two controls and then a target. So three total qubits that we're acting on. And here is the corresponding matrix. If we look at the dimensions of this matrix, uh, we will see that it's an eight by eight matrix. And that makes sense because we have a two to the three, which is equal to eight, and we're acting on three qubits. So our uh, final matrix that we um, use to represent that operation is going to be eight by eight. If we look at the top left quadrant, that is the two qubit identity matrix or I tensor I. And then the bottom quadrant is our C naught matrix. So we just took our C naught matrix and added a control. And we followed basically the same procedure that we did for taking a single qubit operation and adding a control line on that. Let's examine what happens with states when we transform them by the CC not gate or the Toffoli gate. So we have phi, gamma, and psi as our input quantum state, and then we also have their outputs as well. 
So we have our following matrix. And when we do our state evolution, we will see that um, our transformation from input to output will be very similar to the C0 gate, but we now have an extra control we have to take into consideration. So if we look at our state evolution, we're going to see that our states going from input to output will stay the same, except in the case when we have both controls equal to one. When we have both controls equal to one, we will toggle the target qubit and that will cause it to exchange a zero value for one and one value for zero. So here the basis one, one, zero is now basis one, one, one. Basis 111 now has a value of 110. As a note, the CC not gate or the Toffoli gate with more control qubits is called the generalized Toffoli operation.